you just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. Good evening, this is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. In tonight's bulletin, PG Police Force says social media reports are no grounds for investigations. Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama praises former Fiji citizens for keeping historical roots alive. And find out who's been crowned Miss Bula Festival 2015. Posts on social media about incidents of assaults, bullying and other crimes are of no help to the Fiji Police Force. Chief of Operations and Investigations ACP Rusiate Tunravu says they are powerless to act based purely on social media reports. Ritika Pratap has more. The police force needs evidence and witness statement to act on any alleged crime, including reports of assault and bullying. Chief of Operations Rusiate Tunravu says most people are resorting to social media to highlight criminal incidents and expect the force to do something. We cannot uh, conduct investigation without uh, evidence, without uh, people coming out openly uh, to register their concern with us. And uh, bullying is one of the areas that we are looking to remember that we are just working in accordance with a crimes decree. A case of alleged bullying and assault at a school was highlighted on social media in the past week. But ACP Tundravu says no formal complaint was made at any of the stations. Uh, the schools that uh, we've noted that it's in the website, eh, uh, social web, eh, but uh, none has come up to the police for investigation. As I've stated, for us we, we want evidence. Eh? We would like witness to state that. Apart from that, uh, as much as he would like to put it on the website, but if there's no evidence in that and there's no witness for us to record the statement and start the investigation, then we cannot do anything. ACP Rusia de Tundravu says an awareness team from the force is visiting schools around the country. He says they're concerned that people have termed assault cases as bullying and are not coming forward to report on any matters. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Prime Minister Varengambani Marama has commended former Fiji citizens in Canada for keeping their culture and traditions alive. Speaking at the inaugural Miss Fiji Canada 2015 Red Carpet Gala, Bani Marama said the event symbolizes Fiji's historic roots. Ritikar Patap has more. The first ever Miss Fiji Canada pageant coincided with the first ever visit to Canada by any Fijian Prime Minister. Prime Minister Voringe Bani Marama was invited by former Fijians to be part of Fiji Day celebration and at the same time officiate the pageant. Benny Marama says the event doesn't just attract Fijians living in Canada, but also connects many people who are closely linked to Fiji through birth, family, culture and the common experience of being Fijian. He says with the pageant, the Canadian Fijians are stealing a march on Fiji by celebrating this year's first Fiji Day. He says it's two months ahead of schedule, but it proves that Fiji Day can be any day when a Fijian community joins together to celebrate their heritage and pay tribute to the nation of their birth. Benny Marama says Canada has a large Fijian community because many of them were told through words or threats or worse that they were not welcome in Fiji. However, he says Fijians no longer have to choose between the country of their birth and the country that took them in because Fijian laws now allow for multiple citizenship. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Miss TKG Handicraft and Media Wave says Sir Misiti has been crowned Miss Digicel Bula Festival Queen 2015. Miss Siti was also crowned Miss Charity, having raised more than $6,000. All contestants together raised over $12,000 during the festival. Miss FBC Eleni Matatolu was the first runner-up, while 
Volotolu Bilitaki Miss Clyde Acro is the second runner-up. Miss Bula Sese Misiti will compete at the Miss Fiji pageant later this year. Now the week-long festival was held at Prince Charles Park in Nandi. Well, that's the end of one festival, but the mother of all festivals, Hibiscus 2015, is only just getting ready to kick off. More after the break. Welcome back. A new venue for this year's Vodafone Hibiscus Festival hasn't affected preparations towards the Mother of All Festivals. Hibiscus Events Group Chair Hirdesh Basad says the atmosphere will be the same when the week-long event kicks off at the Carpenter Suva City Foreshore this Friday. Shirin Lata has more. A week away from the premier festival of the South Pacific and organizers are getting things in order. We have been working with Suva City Council and Fulton Hogan on the ground for the setup and logistic requirements to ensure that we not only meet the needs of our partners, our sponsors, our vendors, but holders that we also maintain and not ex but exceed our, your expectations. Despite moving from Albert Park, its home for half a century, organizers promise to deliver the best rides, food stalls and entertainment come the weekend. 13 queen contestants, 13 kings, 12 teens, 10 princesses and 10 prince contestants are vying for the crowns. This year the focus is again on climate change. We have witnessed temperatures increasing, rising sea levels and many other negative effects to our coastal shoreline through the impact of climate change. The Vodafone Fiji Hibiscus 2015 will be held from the 14th to 22nd of August. Sharin Lata, FBC News. A man who grew up working as a tea boy, a cleaner and an errand boy is today running his own business. Tonight's successful Fijian is Faisal Hussein, whose chain of barbershops are a cut above the rest for youth in Suva. Chanel Sivan has the story. Successful Fijians is brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. At 34 years old, Faisal Hussein runs three outlets under the name of Supercuts Barbershop, the latest in the now famous Damodha City complex in Lothala Bay. Hussein is from Senganga and moved to Suva when he was 17, not even having finished Form 4 at the Senganga Central College. Then I started cutting sugar cane for three months, but it was a very hard job. Uh, then my uncle was in Suva. He approached me to come and work here. He arranged one shop in Victoria for it was a cleaner and cleaner as a boy. What happened after that? Then I about, about, I work about, about uh, after almost one year, then I started cutting hair. However, Hussein's first job wasn't to last. His uncle's barber shop closed after eight years, leaving the young man jobless. It was very difficult for me to start the business because I got no money to start the business. Eh? And my uncle, Wai Hussein, helped me one place in Mid Road, uh, in Supremefield Complex. Uh, one space was empty and before I think the barber shop was there, but nobody can run the business there. They leave the shop and run away. Because the chair was there, one wooden chair, but not the, the right chair for the barber. Eh? But I got no money to start it. But when I start, first customer come like one o'clock, two o'clock, like that. But I, I, I keep on going. Eh? Uh, then I start to train one boy for me to walk. And slowly he, he, the fellow too start learning and then we started there. From humble beginnings, Hussein started to dream big. Taking a $20,000 loan from the Fiji Development Bank, he bought another shop in the heart of Suva. 
after five years, we got another opportunity to open in the mother city. That was the biggest uh, place to do the business for us. And like first, I was very afraid to do the business in the big place. Eh? And when we started, and the business do well there. And from there, we start doing well. Sixteen years down the lane, the son of a cane farmer has a stable business and steady income. He even provides jobs for eleven people. If you thought this is where his story ends, think again. Hussein is about to open his fourth branch in October, this time in Kinoya Nasinu, at the World Harvest Centre shopping mall. When I came, uh, I was thinking if I don't work hard, I have to go back to Kachukokini. Eh? That's why that's the thing make me more hard to work here. Actually, I married Faisal. He was just a normal baba. So I think it uh, doesn't matter what a husband is when you get married to him. It's all what he becomes after marriage. I always ask by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give success to Faisal. He dedicates his success to his parents who worked hard in the farms in Senganga. Today they live with him in Nandera Nasinu. Channel Shivan, FBC News. Successful Fijians was brought to you by the Fiji Development Bank, your partner in progress. Coming up in FPC Sports, Rewa successfully defends the BOG title. And coach Kate Carpenter laments PG Pearl's poor form. Choo, choo, choo. Hey, hey, Namaste Fiji. Aapke har ek problem ke dawa lekar main a gayi hu. 9 se 12 baje tak aapki saheli Renu. Choo, choo, choo. 40 ne 20 ka dikhna hai. Main hu na aapke saath mein Mirchi FM par 9 se 12 baje tak Monday to Friday. Mirchi, it's hot. The Rewa football side has successfully defended the Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants title after beating Ba 2-0 in the final this afternoon. Brothers Iosefe Vervo and Epeli Sokuru scored a goal in each half to the delight of the home fans at Watuda Kambau Park. Being uh, Rewa uh, unsteady at the moment but that sort of kick is not a good one by Mr. Winnie. In they come Vervo waits and Verovo has done that mistake by Mr. Winnie in the way in the way said the Ricky Hughes Hughes races away and he comes with a cross and played through and played through as Rewa get their second Epeli Sokuru Rewa led by 1-0 at halftime Fiji Pearls coach Kate Carpenter is lamenting the team's effort in their 60-41 loss to Uganda yesterday in the Netball World Cup the national side is now out of the top eight standings, having suffered two successive losses against lesser-ranked teams. And the Fiji Pearls will take on Zambia at 5.15 p.m. tomorrow, and you can watch it live on FBC TV. Well, the stage is set for an epic showdown in the final of the Coke Zero Deans. Ratu Kandavulevu School will battle Maris Brothers High School in the under-18 grade in a much-anticipated finale to the schoolboys competition. Chalindo Dhaka Dhaka has more. Ratu Kandabulebu School overcame a strong challenge from Ratu Nabula College to win 17-10 in their semi-final battle yesterday. The main motivating factor here is uh, the students wanting more to win uh, given the fact that uh, it's, uh, it's been a while, it's about 10 years now. And uh, given the rugby history of RKS, uh, I think uh, that is what uh, that is driving us uh, this year. The boys from Londoni will front up against an impressive Maris Brothers High School outfit which bundled defending champions Lelin Memorial School out of the competition with a 2013 victory. We gave away too many penalties, too many unnecessary penalties, but in the end uh, credit goes to the boys, heads off. Uh, since the school, this is, I think the last time the school played in a, in a final was way back, couple, 30, 30 odd years ago. So this, is, this in itself is an achievement. Both schools will be chasing for a spot in the history books when they clash in the final at the ANZ Stadium next Saturday. Regardless of the outcome, fans can be assured of an entertaining game of rugby. Talendo Dakavaka, FBC Sports. were 
experienced over most parts of the country today. A trough of low pressure lies slow moving over Fiji, while another trough affects Tuvalu, Tokelau, Tahiti, Nauru and western Kiribati. Temperatures in most centres remained in their 20s. Suva recorded 24 degrees, Nandi 26, Lotoka and Ba 28, while Lambasa had the highest at 31 degrees. Now the forecast for tomorrow, occasional showers over the interior of the larger islands, central and eastern parts of the group, isolated heavy falls are expected. Taking a look at Tuesday, fine apart from brief showers over most places. Our main points before we go, Fiji police say they are powerless to act on reports of assault and bullying posted on social media unless someone files an official complaint. Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama praises former citizens for their successes in Canada. And Ms. TKG Handicraft and Media Wave CSM Misiti is the new Digicel Miss Buller Festival. On to our poll segment. This week we are asking should we have phone tapping in line with international standards. Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Good night.